So today I'm going to be talking about how you can build a custom copilot and the custom copilot I'm creating is about how you can take all the videos or the amazing content from Ignite and turn that into actual knowledge. Um, I'm not going to spend too long on this screen because I know I'm going to overrun here already. But this is the first chance I've had to talk about my new role uh, recently moved within Avenard to look over the overall copilot strategy from the modern work perspective moved into the center of AI. So very excited about that and first chance I've had to talk about it. So I'm going to sneak that one in there as well. But let's talk about what co-pilots are, because a lot of what I'm going to show you, some of you will be thinking, well, hang on a sec, you're just showing a little bit of AI stuff and it's not really a uh, kind of co-pilot itself, but really a co-pilot is anything that helps support you. It's your colleague that can sit next to you. It's your assistant using AI. It will check your stuff. It will edit. It will help you recap. It is that little person that sits next to you. No, not a real person, but a little person that that sits next to you and helps you there. If we talk about the ecosystem, and again, this is another slide I've been trying out with people. So let me know if you uh, feel this helps at all um, on there. It's still a work in progress, and I've just noticed that Dynamics has gone onto a second line, darn it. But there's so many different ones. I know Donna Sark has been talking about there being 156 different co-pilots. There's all these different ones uh, out there that are available that you can take off the sh shelf. You can go and watch Gary Trinder's session next week to find out how you can extend those. But what what we're talking about today is more of those point solutions. You've got a specific scenario where you're looking to achieve something and you've got the Copilot Studio, you can do that, or you can build in with Azure and those Azure OpenAI ones within that. I love Kevin Scott. I think it was Builds last year. He talked about his podcast, Custom Copilot, where he dropped his podcast in there. It would transcribe it. It would do all the things. It would go and look people up, uh, summarize it, and publish that up. That's the kind of copilots we're talking about. So I wanted to build something like that. And it's always good to have a real challenge on there. And the challenge for me was ignite and i just lost track of so much content there's so much stuff that comes through there's so much available that you can watch and actually loads of it last time was about ai <clears throat> and it kind of got me thinking could i use ai to digest all that knowledge and i actually set out a challenge and um uh, speaker of the uh, co-host of the Copilot Connection web uh, podcast. I know Paul Bullock, uh, he joins that uh, challenge that I put out there to build something. And maybe I'm going to convince him to come and speak on the show about that. But I also wanted to do it a little bit myself as well. So how did I go about doing that? And sorry if I keep looking down, I'm uh, keeping an eye on the chat uh, on my phone at the same time um, on that. Steps I use, there is actually an Ignite API. You can see a few um, people have put it out on GitHub, but you can go and get that and get a list of the sessions that have come through and actually work on those. So you can get that list of sessions and get that list of the videos. So I got something that could go to that, pull that information out and put that up into Azure storage so I could do something with it. I then wanted to transcribe it, so to actually batch process that. And I'll talk about some of the uh, fun and games I have with that. Uh, then add that to a search index. So given all that content that was there, I wanted to be able to index it and then find a way to bring those results to actually be able to query and do things with it. Some of the tools uh, that I was kind of used and considered and in some cases decided didn't quite work for me uh, on there, the Azure speech. So that gives you that transcription. Could have used the new Whisper Sync, uh, not Whisper Sync, uh, that's the Amazon one, uh, the Whisper that's available in Azure OpenAI. There's different ways you could have transcribed. I decided to keep it simple with that, with the Azure speech that's there. There's the AI search, formerly um, cognitive search, uh, as part of the Azure ones that allowed me to kind of index that content um, within there. I was using Logic Apps for a lot of the heavy lifting because much as I love Power Automate, I love that ability to kind of keep it all within um, Azure. And, and also I love flipping over to that JSON mode so you can actually kind of copy and paste bits of code within there. Um, added some cognitive services. Really, that was primarily linked in with the AI search, and I'll show uh, a little bit of that. It just extracted some of the information. So I, I needed to bring that in to exist, but was just using that within the search itself. Obviously, Azure OpenAI uh, 
AI within there. And then the ways to visualize some of this and get access to the content. I actually looked at um, Teams AI and Copilot Studio as well. So trying out the two different things on and I'll be honest, I was trying not to, but I ended up keep falling back to PowerShell because it cost me a lot less money from that. But because so many of you want to see the techie stuff, I'm not going to disappoint you and show you some of the things within Azure that I've got. Uh, actually, I'm going to start off because my notes were wrong um, with a little bit of code. Let's uh, bring up the script. Um, just want to show a little bit of this. Um, where's the one that I want to bring up? This was a uh, available from someone else and I've lost. There we go. That's what I was looking for. That is the Ignite uh, API that you can call. You need to be registered. You need to uh, authenticate with that. But once you've done that, you can call that API and get a list of the sessions. So I've got a little script here. Um, I took, um, I will put out in the uh, chat afterwards because I just remembered I forgot to give that to Paul David, uh, in terms of the links, let me just shrink that down. Um, this is an available script that's out there on GitHub. I use this to kind of download those sessions. So I pulled it to a directory, um, pulled out those different elements. And the only thing I changed from the original script was instead of saving it locally, I got it to push it straight up to the Azure storage as well. And I think this ran overnight, um, was relatively quick, didn't come up with any errors, captured all the ones where there was a recording available. Uh, do go and nag people to get those recordings up. Uh, it gave me a report and I had those up in Azure after that. Next, I took these and you can see as part of the speech studio that I'm in. So this is part of the uh, Azure speech. This is batch speech to text. There's a few other nice things that looking at uh, while I was preparing this, this live chat avatar popped up. So there's kind of newer things appearing in this all the time. You can um, bring in some kind of real time speech to text and build that into your app. But I ended up looking at this batch speech to text within there. And there's a nice CLI, there's sample code, so you can call all this. But because it's a studio, you've got the different files within this. And if my machine behaves, let's see if that uploads. So I recorded a, a very short video um, for women in security recently. You can see you can literally drag those files across. It will process that and build out the transcription. Just while that's going, I'm going to show some of the ones in there. It's some some of the challenges I've faced with this is the speaker diarization So uh, as you can see from this, this is separating out the speakers. So when you get that transcription, you can see the different conversations from different people going on. Unfortunately, I found that it didn't work with stereo and most of the uploads seem to use stereo. So it meant that it would just fail from that. And I will be honest, I haven't tried this file one that's processing um, on there as well. So it may fail from the same thing if I turn that on. Uh, and it's only me speaking, so there wouldn't be much point on that as well. You can see you can bring some profanity filter mode in there. So if uh, someone's getting a bit sweary, you can um, mask that and bring on the different punctuation. You've got a few fairly basic uh, items that you can put in terms of transcription uh, as well. Oh, look at that, it's finished just in time. Um, you will notice there is a free trial, so you can do five audio files per batch job and one minute per audio file, so you can try a few different things out. And I know it says audio file there, but you can put videos into this um, and it will bring that uh, up. I didn't make up the word diarization, look, it's there. Microsoft made it up, yes, but I didn't, I promise. So here you can see it's it's pulled that information out. Uh, I mentioned it in stereo, so you can see the two channels. Um, I never worked out why you'd have two different people saying different things in stereo, but there we go um, from there. More importantly, if you look at the JSON, you can see what comes back and you can see the source. You can see those combined phrases. You'll see the different bits that come through there. So you'll see this one is all lowercase, kept very simple within there versus the full display one that's got all the punctuation, all the different elements. So you've got different ways of putting through that uh, JSON. And there was my first challenge. So let's just jump over to the um, item. Oh, no, before I go on to that, I just want to show the logic app. So while I dropped all those files into there, obviously then had to process those. 
And the way a scientist processed that was just have a job. I just had this manually triggered that would retrieve the list of sessions from the uh, Ignite API and would write those. And if we can bring those out, so you can see they would actually get a list of each of the sessions. It would get the download, add that to the storage. Um, it would get the link. And you can see with Logic Apps, there is that transcription with, with that speech. So when you've set up those your AI speech, you can give it a key and you can actually get it to transcribe that and write those items out into a transcription. So I had a big Logic App that processed through and ran overnight again very nicely. And I will jump over to the browser. Let's have a look at some of the storage in there. So you can see I've created a different things. I had the Ignite content. I've cleared a lot of that down just to save me a bit of cost on there. And then I had the transcriptions that have come through. So here I've got a list of the transcriptions. You get a nice file with a report on success. Let's have a uh, look at that uh, later. But really, it's this main one that's at content URL underscore zero dot JSON. That is the file that you saw in that speech studio that brings that thing out. Now, oh, Leon, very good timing in your questions there. How much does this cost? Well, if you're lucky, you, you have a nice subscription and you've maybe got a hundred and forty pound limit. Um, you hit that very quickly if you try and process all these. I believe this cost me about two hundred and fifty dollars just to run that transcription. Now, I had a limit on there. So uh, as soon as it burned through my um, free sub subscription amount on there, it stopped. However, at the end of the month, I then got a charge for the extra bits on there. So I'm currently having a little bit of a debate with support around how these uh, limits pick up there. So uh, you, you'll hear at the end of this, uh, I can do it for less. Uh, thank you, Ine. I'll, I'll hold you up on that for next Ignite. Um, I, I haven't published this yet because I want to get to the bottom and make sure that I'm not pushing something out there that will suddenly use up everyone's subscription and push through from there. But I am looking to publish something similar to this that will, will work in a similar way without burning through your credits very, very quickly. But that is your big lesson to learn from this is to watch that out. Um, now, given those reports, the other one was I wanted to transform those transcriptions into Word. I had that JSON, but I didn't want to just put that JSON into the search index. Uh, I did try that, but the results really weren't very good. So I decided to pull that back uh, and instead, again, wrote a logic app that would go through, process through each of those uh, uh, content URL zero dot JSON files. You can see I've listed out those blobs within there. I've gone through each of those loops and actually pulling that out. Um, oh, there we go into this one and passing that transcript and creating that into a word file and then uploading that word file into the blob. Again, I hit a problem with this. The limit of the logic app, I couldn't put, um, you can see here I'm looping through each of those uh, items. I've pulled that recognized phrase. The transcription files were too big. And when I was putting into this variable, it was failing because it had too much in there. So I moved away from that and instead went back to good old trusty PowerShell um, within there. So here you can see I'm just getting that blob contents using the uh, PowerShell um, module um, for Azure, getting a list of the blobs, extracting those, saving those locally. Um, where have I got to on there? No, it's further up. Yeah, there we go. Getting the blob contents um, because that was stored as uh, a JSON. Um, I could take the JSON element from that, pump that all out to another location and then upload that back up into the Azure storage as well. So I could go grab that content and just upload back. and go back to the storage there. Here you can see just the text file that just had that list of text. Then I've got a nice, easy location that can jump ahead and you'll see there's this button of import data. So I can import this data into my search service. Uh, I can use an index on that so I could have that run every time a new file went into that. I've just done it as a one off, pulled all those documents out. And there I have a nice index of 292 documents of those downloads. And I can say, let's have a look for SharePoint Premium. 
and that will go and query, bring me some details. I can see that it's pulled back from session. I mentioned the cognitive service. With that cognitive service, I can do things like add locations. So it's pulled out from this session all the locations mentioned, all the organizations, even the people mentioned um, within that particular session and picked out key phrases. And that will all help your search to, to be higher quality and work a little bit better. Uh, and David, yes, I am keeping an eye on time and should be finished very quickly now. Um, oops. Um, so going along from there, once I've got that, I could then pull this out and wrap this up with Azure OpenAI. So here I've got the chat pro, uh, track playground. I've added my own data on it, um, except it's removed it. So just to very quickly show you that once you've got your AI search, you can select that service. You select that index that was created. You can acknowledge that. You could have enabled the vector search. Um, one of the future blog posts I'd like to do is what the difference is and compare those to see how it makes sense, whether you need to spend that extra money um, within there as well. Once you've gone that, you map out your index. So I've given it the file name. I think I gave that the session code. The title I gave is a session title. And I just added when I created that index, a couple of combined things that gave me a URL for that. Um, I'm going to keep that as keywords on there, again, keeping the cost down because I started burning through too many of my credits. And now instead of, whereas before, I could ask SharePoint Premium, but I couldn't ask who is talking about SharePoint Premium. I would just get a load of the same sort of thing and it wouldn't tell me too much. Now, by putting it in Azure OpenAI, I can ask it questions that I can get more specific and see who those key people are. Now I'm doing this as a live demo. <laughs> oh, you see it's picked up one and hasn't picked up that answer. Um, let me go back to uh, one of the other phrases that I tested before and should come up. Um, if anyone's got any questions, uh, I'm happy to try that. Um, I'm going to do a slightly corporate one. I do apologize, but just because I knew this work, who from Avenard spoke at Ignite? I know we had a couple of people uh, there talking within the session. So because I've identified those, it's using those transcripts. It's pulling that information so I can see that we have the global lead for digital ethics was there. I can start to ask those questions. Now, because I'm out of time, I'm very going to quickly just show this and talk about the problems. I wanted to bring Teams AI into this. But as you'll see, if I, uh, I've built up the Teams AI, I've put the uh, that same as your open AI key into that. At the moment, from what I understand, and I need to dig into this a little bit more, it's not pulling that external data. And when I go and ask, it's just asking the standard large language model on there. And apparently SharePoint doesn't have a premium service. Um, so yeah, we need to go and have a word with Mr. Teeper about that uh, and find out where that comes. But the next phase, and I, I hope to share a little bit more on this uh, on a, in a blog post and in a video on there, would be to bring this open. I tried it with Copilot Studio, um, coming back very quickly to the playground. There's a lovely button here that says deploy to power virtual agent bot. It's a lovely button, but it doesn't work that well at the moment. So I'm hoping that now it's within there. I could build an app around this, but I'm hoping the Teams AI library has now got a bit more of that reference and I'll be able to include that and share that out more with people at Bot. So what did uh, I learn from this? Just to wrap up those and I'm hoping David's had some of the links in the chat. Um, make sure you check your costs before you turn these things on at scale. Do that for a few things and make sure you understand the costs and don't expect that to appear in the portal straight away. I did find actually that some of the uh, sessions didn't have title codes and things like that. So as with all Copilot, as with a lot of AI, check your data governance, check your validation that your data is correct out there. Also have a thing. I just threw that data in. I didn't really think about what questions I wanted to ask. And when I did, I had to go back and kind of add information like what was the session code and what was the other information on there. So think about what you want to ask with it and also be be prepared to iterate fast. These, this environment is changing so quickly. There's so many new features. Make the most of those within that and be able to prepare to jump with those. As the new versions of Teams AI come out that has more capabilities, there'll be less that you need to do yourself. Thank you.